Welcome. Today's lesson is on insect identification, and we're looking specifically at the order of Hinnoptera. Hinnoptera is broken actually into smaller suborders, and the suborder we're going to concentrate on today is the true bugs. And they have certain characteristics I would like to explore today, and also talk a little bit about their mouth parts as well as their life cycle. Now, in order to understand a little bit about some of their special features, I need to talk to them and, and, and show you what the parts will look like. And I think it will make a lot more sense, especially those of you who are studying this, to go to certain competitions. The first thing that I want to go over in uh, Hinnoptera is the fact that it is from the Greek word. And the Greek word is divided into two. Uh, hemi, which means half. And then patero means wing. And if you look at this likeness, which happens to be a lycus bug, and just a quick little aside, I want to give a shout out to the artist of this uh, particular drawing, and that's Lindy Wax. She used to be on the uh, Ag Pest team, and now she's taken on a kind of a, an art project in creating uh, these pictures so our students can identify them. And I wanted to share those with you. So just a shout out to Lindy. Thank you so much. There, I I think they're great. If you if you like them, why don't you give her a comment uh, uh, below in the below the description? That would be great. What I want to uh, take a look at is some of the external features, like for instance the antennas. If you look at the antennae, you'll notice there are four segments. So this particular order. Uh, and what we're also going to be doing is taking a look like right, right there. Right behind their thorax, there's this plate of armor. And this one is decorated with a little yellow heart, sometimes a green heart. Uh, and a ligus bug in particular, is that's one of their features that you can identify them with, is, is that little triangular piece. And uh, um, that's called the scutellum. Uh, the scutellum then is just for some protection, but obviously this is also a way in which to identify some of the species of this order. The other thing is if you take a look on the outside of the scutellum, you'll notice that there are some kind of protective plates, exoskeleton, and they will protect the wings. Two thirds of the wings are covered um, in this part, and this part happens to be called uh, the corium. The corium then is protecting what's underneath which are wings. And the wings, this is another feature that's also very, very prominent in this or suborder of, of insects, is the bottom third of the wings and the abdomen are unprotected. They don't have any, mem uh, any exoskeleton covering them. You'll see the wings themselves. Sometimes four or five, possibly even more, uh, veins you'll see in them. So this is another characteristic. At the apex or the lower portion of the abdomen, uh, abdomen, there is no exoskeleton covering the wings like they would be like in the beetles. So those are just some of the common characteristics. Now there's a couple other things that I think are very, very important to, to understand because in some of the contests, they're going to be asking you not uh, only for the name and the order, but they're going to be asking you for like, for instance, the mouth parts because that tells you um, how they um, attack and, and eat plants. And uh, that's why it's called ag pests. They tend to be a pest out in the field. So these are called the sucking and, or excuse me, piercing and sucking mouth parts. Once you see what it has on it, some of the equipment that it has on it, you'll understand. So this is a particular um, true bug. I don't remember the name of this one right off the top of my head. But anyway, this one has what we call a beak. All of them have a beak. And it's crossed between a sword and a straw. The straw is kind of like it goes right inside or down the middle of the beak. So it's kind of covered. So it's really sharp. The beak itself is sharp on the outside. But on the inside, there's this tube, this straw that once they uh, insert the lance or the sword or the beak into, let's say, the plant, it's going to suck out the juices uh, of the plant. And if you're an assassin bug, you're inserting it into a, a prey item such as another insect and sometimes even a soft tissue one like uh, a human, and they will suck out fluids. Now, on this poor uh, guy, we took off his body, so he had his head and the beak showing, so you can see how it's tucked underneath his head. And then in this one, you'll notice that the beak is in between the rostrum. There's, there's two halves to it on the bottom part of their, 
uh, of their head and it helps kind of give it support and also keeps it lined up. So there you have it. It's called piercing sucking mouth parts. It's this beak uh, that kind of has the two characteristics. It's sharp and it also is hollow as well. Those two things allow it to pierce and then suck the juice out of its prey. All right, the next thing I want to show you is their life cycles. The life cycles are what we would consider incomplete metamorphosis. Now, um, compared to complete metamorphosis, complete metamorphosis is like a um, moth or a butterfly. And when they're born, butterflies and moths, basically what comes out is a larva. And the larva is relatively small at first, and then as it eats and consumes a plant material, it gets bigger. But it's still just a larva. And, and then once it gets to a certain point, then it turns into a pupa. And that pupa will then turn into the moth or the butterfly. It is completely different look from the time it... it um, comes out to the time it becomes an adult. So it's a complete metaphor, a complete change from this worm into a moth that can fly. Now, incomplete metamorphosis um, is, well, different. It's, it's a lot different. Once these guys hatch out, they're, they're completely complete. They're ready to go. Um, they have mouth parts. Uh, they're very mobile. Um, they're precocious. And what basically happens is over time, they'll go through some, they'll shed, um, they will molt. And when they molt, they are a little bit bigger and they're a little bit closer to the look of the, the adult. And that would be an incomplete metamorphosis. So these instars um, basically allow them to become more and more like the adult. So this is an incomplete life cycle for this order. So. Uh, this is the end of, of part one. Part two, though, is going to be similar. We're going to be taking a look at six different uh, um, true bugs. And what we're going to be doing is looking primarily at the hosts and identifying the features. So when you go to the contest, you'll be able to identify them as whether it be a lycus bug or a squash bug. What are the characteristics? What do they look like? And what are the hosts? I hope this has helped you, and I thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button as well as subscribe, and we'll be seeing you very soon at one of the contests. See ya. Bye.